Welcome to another Collector's Corner video. In this one, we'll be doing something of a quick hands-on restoration of sorts, specifically to this Canadian Mark II helmet. Now, we're not gonna be doing anything crazy like stripping it down and repainting it or anything like that. Instead, it'll be a quick cleanup and reattaching of a liner and chin strap. Along the way, we'll talk a little bit about the helmet and what makes it an interesting one. So, this shell was up for auction and listed simply as World War I American helmet. Now, this style of helmet, often referred to by its nickname of the Brody helmet, was used by the United States in World War I and during the interwar years, however the color seemed off in the photos and didn't really appear accurate for the era. So a gamble was taken and it was one for next to nothing. Upon inspecting it, the letters GSWAC and MK along with the date of 1941 were seen, so one world war off. With a quick Google search, it was identified as a Canadian-made Mark II helmet made by General Steelworks, GSW of Canada, with AC being a sort of batch identifier. The fact it has riveted bales on the side also indicated it as a combat helmet rather than a defense or civilian variant. Obviously, as you can see, the hole in the top indicated that the attachment screw was missing, meaning the liner was as well. So we shot our friend Steve over at Combat Relics a message containing a few photos and info who essentially confirmed everything saying it was a good find for the price. The internals of the helmet are broken up into four pieces, the chin strap, the liner itself, a padded dome piece that rests on top of the liner, and the securing bolt and washer. This pretty much means that finding all the interior pieces may require a bit of searching around, as the more pieces there are, the less likely you are to find them all together. But being that Combat Relics deals with World War II era helmets and gear quite frequently, we asked if they had or knew of where to find any liners. Luckily, they had a period liner and chin strap, so all we had to do was find the padded piece and securing bolt. Both of these were actually found online relatively easily. A reproduction bolt and washer were sourced by way of the website Military Tour, while the pad proved to be a bit more challenging, but was eventually found in the form of an older British one on eBay. Thankfully, the differences in Canadian and British liners boil down to very small details, such as these rubber bumpers around the liner, which provide a level of cushioning between the wearer's head and shell, so the center pad is pretty cross-compatible. The fact that it was all secured via one single screw on top of the helmet made servicing and replacing components rather quick and easy. So the first thing done was just give it a light cleaning to remove any grime, dirt, or dust. Being that everything was missing, the best approach is to attach the chin strap first since you'll need the space in the shell to be empty. It has two buckles that simply clasp onto either side of the helmet via these two connectors. Over time and continued usage, these can often be bent or warped, and to really open them up, you'll need a flathead screwdriver or something to pry it slightly open with. A bit of care, a steady hand, and a lot of patience. But eventually they'll clasp right into it. Afterwards, you can tap them shut a bit to prevent them from slipping out. Next, for the liner, just slot the bolt in the hole, then line up the liner and the main pad, then finally screw in the washer and tighten. And voila, you have yourself a fully recreated, ready-to-go Canadian Mark II helmet. These helmets are pretty interesting as they are of British design and began production and distribution in 1938, However, Canada was not able to start developing them until around 1940 or so. Once they were, however, just over 1.1 million helmets were produced in the first three years and were actually used by Canadians longer than the British, as in 1940 they introduced the Mark III, which improved upon the helmet in many ways, most notably by increasing the slope of the shell. These Mark IIs would eventually be phased out of use shortly after the war being replaced by US M1s. Below, in the description, you can find a fantastic thread that covers the general elements of the Canadian Mark IIs, which helped as a starting point when researching the piece. The whole Brody family is a rather interesting one, as there are a number of versions and subversions, some of which don't really have a whole lot different, save a minor tweak or two. But we'll be looking at them in a much more extensive and proper way down the line in a future The History Of video. Until then, though, hopefully this quick little look at this unique helmet while putting it back together was an interesting one. Though the concept is relatively simple and straightforward, it is always fun hunting down the parts needed and never ceases to be informative and educational. Being that older helmet shells can often be missing components or have damaged ones, there's a good chance more videos like this one will be seen in the future. It's a fun activity to do. A special thanks to Combat Relics for providing the liner and chin strap. You can check out their ever-changing listings of military ranging from the First World War up through the present. Link can be found in the description as well. You may even run across a helmet just like this one. Be sure to like and subscribe, or just check back soon for more videos right here on Uniform History.